Hello everyone, my name is Dan the Tutor. This is a clip from one of my weekly group tutoring sessions at the University of Delaware for Physics 201. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you and enjoy. So the first question I have here, let's say we have a ball on a track connected to a spring just like this. I have a ball connected to a spring, it's on a track, and we're gonna be shooting it up into the air, okay? I wanna know two things. Number one, I wanna know what's the velocity when it leaves the spring. So pretty much what's the velocity at that point right there after it leaves the spring. And then the second thing I wanna know is what is the max height that this thing reaches? I wanna know these two things. Let me give you some variables now. I'm gonna tell you that mass, the mass of this object, I'll be easy for once, I'm gonna say one kilogram. I'm going to say that the spring has a spring constant of 1,000 newtons per meter. So again, lowercase k, that has to do with the spring right here. And then the last thing I'll say is that this spring is compressed. It's compressed by, let's say, 50 centimeters. A lot of times they give you the units in centimeters for springs, for whatever reason. Which means we're going to have to convert to meters. In case you're wondering, that's super easy. 50 centimeters is just divide by 100, you get 0.5 meters. Okay, great, we have our compressed distance. Which, which variable is that? It's x. x is the compressed variable in spring. Okay, so my first question for you guys is, is energy conserved? Right, because the first thing you need to figure out is energy conserved. That determines what equation we're looking at. Notice here I did not mention friction. I probably should have. On the test they will tell you no friction, or at least they would tell you if there is friction. But if they don't mention friction at all, I think you can safely assume that you don't need to worry about it. Again, if they don't mention friction, assume there is no friction. They should tell you though. They pretty much have to, or else it's not a fair question. So... In that case, what does that mean? Remember, if I have no friction, I have no pushing or pull, pulling forces going on, I really just have gravity, normal force, and spring force, which, again, I don't need a free body diagram. This is not a forces question. This is actually why, when you get good at work and energy problems, these are going to be your favorite in all of physics. Why? Because if we used forces to solve this problem, this would take like 15 to half an hour, 15 minutes to half an hour to answer this question. We're going to solve it very quickly using work and energy. And again, how do I know I'm talking about work and energy? Well, I'm looking at two points, right? I'm looking at point one when the spring is fully compressed, and point two can be like this point up here when we reach our maximum height. Now, actually, we do need to be careful with this because there are two questions that the question is asking. We want to know our velocity right here at the point directly after the spring leaves contact with the, the ball. So if this is point one, then I'm going to say like right here is point two. Again, this is after it's compressed 0.5 meters. I know I'm kind of being messy with my notation, so let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. And now the other thing I want to say is, what's the equation we're going to use? The equation is going to be E total 1 equals E total 2. And why? Because there's no friction. Okay, so now we need to figure out what kind of energy is at point 0.1. Okay, so this comes back to our question of there are three kinds of energy. Gravitational potential, kinetic, and spring potential. Now, at point one, is there a height? Is that ball a height off the ground? No, which means my height is zero. Great. It means there's no UG. Well, is my ball moving at point one when it's fully compressed? Think about if you ever had a spring-loaded gun before. Is that ball moving when it's fully loaded? No, it's not moving, so there's no kinetic energy either. The only kind of energy there is at point one is spring potential energy. One half kx squared. That's the only energy at point one. Now at point two, we need to figure out which point two we're talking about. Are we talking about point two when the object is right here? And that would be what we use to find max velocity. Or are we talking about this point two right here when we want to find max height? So we do need to pick one. We're going to use both eventually. Let's start with velocity, just since that's closer to the start. So point two, and this is going to be, I'm going to say, for velocity. For velocity, it's going to be, well, look at point two now. At point two, this one right here, 
I'm still not a height off the ground. Height is zero, which means there's no gravitational potential energy, no MGH. I do have kinetic energy because, well, I have velocity. That's what we're solving for. And at this point in time, it's no longer touching the spring, is what we're saying, which means it's all kinetic. Great. So 1 half kx squared equals 1 half mv squared. In other words, all the energy at point 2 is kinetic. So now we need to solve for what again? Velocity. And notice here the 1 halves cancel, cancel out, which is nice. And I can just plug in now. So k, I said, was 1,000 newtons per meter. I'm not going to write the units when I'm actually doing the algebra. So k is 1,000. x, we said, was 0.5. We need to square that. And that equals mass, which was 1, we said, times velocity squared. So if we plug this in a calculator, the left side is going to become 1,000 times 0.5 squared, which should be 250. It is. So 250 equals v squared. The square root of 250 should be a number between what? Something between 15 and 16. So the square root of 250 is 15.8. 15.8 perfect meters per second we're done this question we found velocity how do we find velocity again we said energy is conserved which means e total one equals e total two what was my energy at point one it was all spring energy what was my energy at point two it was all kinetic and then at that point it was just algebra any questions okay well i was gonna ask why did you um use the for the equation for one half mv squared again because that's the equation for kinetic energy. Oh. Okay. Might have missed that. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Wait. I have a quick question, too. Yep. So whenever we do, like, the E total 1 equals E total 2, yep. and we choose, like, two of the different formulas and, like, set them equal to each other? Yes. Okay. Well, it's also important to realize that in this example, it was just, for instance, just spring energy and just kinetic energy. This problem could have been different if, let's say, I had, I don't know, if I had a, a velocity or if I had a height at point two. Like, let's say this was three meters above the ground, so to speak. Now I have both kinetic energy and potential energy due to gravity because I'm three meters above the ground. It is possible to have a combination of the two. You do need to be careful with that. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's it for this question. There's still one more part, though. I wanted to find the max height. So now I have a new point 0.2. Point 0.1 can be the same. Heck, point 0.2 can even be when we have the max velocity, that 1 half mv squared. Again, since energies are equal here, energy is conserved, I can pick any two points I have. I can pick any two points I want. So I'm going to choose the same ones we chose before. 1 half kx squared. Again, this is... A separate question now. This is e total 1 equals e total 2 here still. But this time I'm trying to find max height. I'm trying to find max height. So 1 half kx squared. Because again, at point 1, it's just connected to the spring. There's no velocity. There's no height. At point 2, my new point 2 that is. I'm looking here. Well, at the peak of its flight, at the highest point, what's its velocity going to be? It's going to be 0. Because it's momentarily stopped in there. That's how you know it's the highest point. And because the velocity is momentarily zero, and there's no spring energy, that's for sure, at this point two, this point two right here, the only energy it is, is gravitational potential, mgh. So 1 half kx squared equals mgh this time. Spring energy equals gravitational potential energy. And again, we just need to solve for max height is h now. So 1 half times k is 1,000 times 0.5 squared equals mass, which was 1. g is 9.81 times height. I just need to divide both sides by 9.81 and plug that in a calculator. And we'll get our height. So 1,000 times 0.5 squared, which again is 250. Divide that by 2 and then divide that by 9.81. We're going to get a final height of 12.7, and the units for that are meters. And there we go. That's how we solve conservation of energy problems. Again, this is when energy is conserved. There's no friction. We just look at two points in time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want me to start doing free weekly group sessions at your university, please post in the comments below or email me at dan at danthetutor.com.
Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.